Pastor Tony it's a lot easier to find do it probably. Uh, y'all pray for Brother Tony as he comes and brings the message and wrap it up, stick it in the pocket. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Lord help us. Well, first of, all, first of all, I want to thank my pastor for the opportunity to share, share, share the pulpit tonight. His pulpit tonight. But I say this much, I appreciate when the Holy Ghost gets, gets, gets on this tonight. Just. <laughs> I say, I say, you know, it's, you know um, I started thinking about this afternoon, just try to get a thought from the Lord. And it, just, it just seems like there's just a particular phrase. I'm just going to give you what the, Lord, what the Lord's giving me tonight. Let me see if I can help, see if I can help somebody. But... I said, I said, you know, the Bible, you know, the Bible speaks about, you know, I, mean, I, said, I said, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices right here tonight. I, I, said, I said, Satan comes at us every, such way, every single way you could possibly, possibly think, think of tonight. But, but I'm thankful tonight for every counter move that, de- that Satan brings. I said, I said, God always has a, c- a counter for his counter. Tonight. And, tonight, and I just want to give you something that the Lord's, but feel like, feel like the Lord's put on my heart tonight. I want to see somebody help, get, some, help, get some help tonight up. If you will, I want you to open your Bibles over to the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're in, we're in the book, book, book of Isaiah, cha- chapter 54. Um, you don't really hear much preaching. In this, in this passage a lot, especially in this passage a lot, but when, you, when I studied a little bit this afternoon, just looking at really what the what the passage really the overview, it speaks about it speaks about God's about God's renewal about God, about God's mercies re- renewing day by day to, like to the Gentile church for the, in the future. And I'm just going to read some just portions of verse, portions of scripture tonight from verse 11 to verse 17. Verse 17 is going to be my, my text tonight. There's a specific phrase tonight. I want to see if I can see if the Lord help us. Um, but the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 54 and verse number 11, it said, O thou afflicted, tossed and tempted, and are not conformed. Behold, I will lay stones for fair, fair colors, and lay my foundations with sapphires. And I will make my windows of agates, and my gates, gates carbuckles, and all the borders of, ple- of pleasant stones. And all the children shall be, t- shall be taught of the Lord, and the great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness thou shalt be established, be established. Thou, shalt, thou shalt be far from, from, from oppression. For thou, for thou shalt, shalt not fear, and from, t- and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, I shall, behold they, shall, they, they shall surely gather together, but, to, but not, not with whosoever, whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fail for thy sake. Behold, I have created say, the smith that blow the coals in the fire. And, and bring it forth an, instru- an instrument for, for his work. For I have created the waster to destroy. Verse number 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Amen. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall be conde- shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness of, of me, saith the Lord. Amen. Let's go over the word of prayer. Father, I want to thank you tonight for an opportunity to step behind the sacred desk tonight. I say, Father, I need your help. I need your touch. I need your power. I need, Father, your favor. Help, 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 help our people here tonight. I just pray, I pray, Father, to make it easy for me tonight, which is lay on my heart t- tonight. And I pray tonight, tonight, tonight if somebody's not saved, somebody will, get, somebody will be saved tonight. I pray, Father, whatever the need is for this message, I pray, help us to draw closer. I pray, I pray, I pray to be an encouragement to our people. And may you receive glory for everything to said and done. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But I want to call attention to a phrase in verse number 17 here. It said, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper tonight. Amen. And with the Lord's help, I want to preach to the Lord's going to give you this afternoon, just, just praying about it, but I want to preach to the why should I worry? Amen. Right. Amen. Why should I honestly worry? Yeah. I said, when God's got everything all under control tonight. Why should I honestly worry? 
I say it or not, just because I said Satan throws something our way that God don't have a plan to not to retaliate against anything the devil throws, throws our way. Did you know that the Bible tells us, tells us that Satan can't just do anything without getting, getting permission for God to do so in the first, in the first place? I, uh, I said, you know, I think about you know, Satan's devices. I said, he does not play fair with a Christian's life tonight. I said, he just sees, he pulls the wool over like he does a lost man over 2 Corinthians 4 3 tonight. But I'm going to tell you this much. I'm glad tonight for every move that the devil makes tonight. God has a counter move to counter tonight in his place tonight. Tonight, uh, just simple things. I just want. I, I just want to give you some things about no weapon shall form against me tonight. Uh, you know, a lot of people tonight when we go through things and tonight, uh, for example, they say about the church. They say church is going down, or they say see church is struggling. Can I tell you, the word of God tells us that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church tonight. I'm getting sick and tired of people complaining about churches. I'm getting sick and tired thinking the church goes down. What God said is going up and it's going out one day. Yes, tonight. Tonight. Yes, I'm, te I'm telling you tonight, God's people have more to pray, thank God about and praise God about tonight. I said tonight, but most of the night they're outside the church tonight. Those outside tonight, they're struggling. They're trying to find their own type of weapons, something that can combat with not tonight to be in this world. But I'm glad that we serve with God tonight, that we have something we can get some help from tonight. That's why tonight, uh, you know, the Bible tells, I hear this verse a lot here, here in this church tonight, but God is our refuge tonight. He's a present help tonight for a time of need. A lot of times, uh, I, I hear tonight from the word of God tonight. I listen tonight. Uh, listen, <laughs> listen tonight. But if God be for us, who can be against us tonight? Uh, you, tonight? You know, why should I worry? Why should I worry tonight what Satan's going to do? I've already read the last read, uh, the last chapter over in the book of Revelation. He's going into the lake of fire one day tonight. Uh, I ain't going to worry about going to hell. I ain't going to worry about seeing a lake of fire. I don't have to be around when there's fire and there's prince all around. I'm going to be with the king of kings and the lord of lords tonight. I pray tonight, say holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, this way. Which was is to come tonight. One day I'm going up, I'm going out, and I'm going out with a shout. No weapon shall form against me, shall stand. Just because something's temporal, don't mean it's a permanent tonight. That's right. Tonight. That's right. That's right. No weapon. I'm gonna give you some things tonight. Yeah, you know what I said on the spot about what? Why should? Why should I worry? You know, why should I say, why should I worry, number one, if, if I thought about with Job this afternoon, the thought. Why should I worry tonight when, when Satan throws my way personal, personally? I mean, you read over in the book of Job, especially the very first two chapters. I'm telling you, I don't see how that may be made out of life the life of life. I mean, I said, I said, Job has got one of the best godliest testimonies you're going to find in the Bible, especially in the Old, in the Old, Test, in the Old Testament. I mean, he's, I mean, he's, I think he's praying for his children. He's, I said, I said, God's prospering with the land, his family. He's getting a job. He's, he's giving us so much wealth tonight. And then Satan just comes along tonight, travel to and fro. And he tells God, see my servant. I said, what if I was to put his hand on for him for a while? What if I took things away from him, you know, for a while? Can I tell you this much? And God said, you go ahead. I said, you take some things away. But you can't kill for a while. Right. But just remember, can you imagine one day he loses everything? First he loses his family. Right. Then he loses the finances, the sheep. Then it's that night. And then I said, then he gets some of the physical diseases right. tonight. Yep. But in everything he says, he comes over in Job 21, 1, verse 21. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord tonight. Amen. He kept his testimony. Then, try, then chapter number two, the devil tries a second time. He tries again. This time he tries his wife. Yes, yes. Now I'm going to defend his wife for a night because if we probably would have gone through what he went through it all in one day, from a finances to a death, I'm sure, I'm sure at some point we would probably have broke down just like she did at some, yes. at, at some point right, right here. Yes. But I said, like, I said, but he tried, I said, his wife sees what he's going through physically. He's got sores. I said, he's lost his, he's lost his own children. He's had to do funeral. He's had to do everything. Yeah. But in all this, he still kept his testimony. Yes. Chapter number three, I said, he's supposed to have three friends come, come by. Yeah. 
I thought, and they find out they exactly his true friends tonight. Right, right. One said, they, I said, they're all trying to reason. They try to say, I said, they try to figure out for themselves and say, why, I said, why is this happening to you? Yeah. One said, one of the three said it's all based, he based his theology, his ideology. He based it upon, based upon religion a lot of time. Yeah. He thinks there's judgment, there's sin that's going on tonight. Right. And he doesn't understand. Right. Then, you, then, I said, you got another phrase tonight. He called him a hypocrite to his face tonight of all, of all things tonight. Yeah. Then you got someone else up trying to decide the reason, tries to rationalize another way time. So they have this nice conversation with Job. But in all this, and it goes back and forth. But in all this, Job, I said, still trusts God. In everything that goes on with him, he still trusts God with him. I'm glad tonight, listen, I said, when you got friends turned against you, when your finances go crazy tonight because God allows temporarily, I think we can still trust that the God tonight that can make up for all that, he, all that he's done. Yes. Right here. Yes. I think tonight that Job had enough faith. When his faith got tested, he said over in Job 19, 20, verse 25, he said, For I know that my Redeemer liveth tonight. Yes. I tell you this much. He may not see it. I said, he may not see it right here in the prison. But sure got, he got a short glimpse of a shadow of things to come tonight. tonight. Yes. I do. I'm glad tonight what happened temporarily. And tonight, tonight, God was able to replace it with that tonight. It's eternal. Because, because, because when you're reading chapter number 42, after, after the first couple of times when he, got, when he had to face his accusations and he went back and forth in the conversations, I said, Joe got a little sidetracked. Now, now that's what elephants, I believe, in the, <clears throat> what? I, I, can't, I can't remember the, I can't, the name. But it's starting from, from chapter 31, but he starts reminding him tonight about, about who God was. He lost his focus on God. And that's from chapter, four, four, <clears throat> chapter 38 to 42, he starts to remember and then he see what God. But the Bible said about Job, there was an after this. I'm thinking that what started bad, God doubled and blessed because he got tested from every weapon formed against Job that would break a man's faith, to break a man's family, his finances, his future, everything tonight. There's a sovereign God in heaven. He trusted tonight, and God was able to double what he, started, what he first originally started with tonight. I'm glad tonight we got that kind of faith in God tonight. I'm glad tonight what, tonight, what, was it, I said, what seemed like a trap from the devil tonight, God turned around and made it a channel of blessing tonight because he survived the channel of blessing. Tonight. No weapons shall form against thee shall prosper tonight. The second thing I look tonight is why should, why should I worry when a storm when a storm passes by? I didn't hear a lot about sick me about that song last couple weeks. I hear, we hear Miss Patricia, we hear Brooke, we see Mom and Dad sometimes sing, start singing. Why, that's all. Why should I worry? But this very same when the very same Jesus is the very one we could call me. You know the Bible said over over in Acts chapter number twenty seven. See, the Bible said there was a hurricane that was co that was coming through. I said the Bible the Bible said there was two hundred seventy six men that was on, that was on board tonight, and that hurricane is just coming at them full steam full steam here. They fight for the life. They try for the time of their life to try to try try to outrun the hurricane. They decided they, said, they didn't want to listen to what Paul said. Paul said just told us to wait tonight, wait till the storm passes, but they wouldn't listen tonight. Right. And as a result tonight, what happened? They just kept they tried to outrun it, but the more they kept trying to try, they kept the more they tried to outrun, outrun the more they kept wearing themselves out over time over over time. Right. But I tell you, but I'm thankful tonight, and as, as, as a result, and as, as a result, the hurricane got closer and the boat and the, the ship started to start getting destroyed. But I'm thankful that during the middle of that night, when I said when everybody was going crazy, they were going shipwrecked. That God, that God had a nice conversation tonight with the glory, with the glory world tonight. I said he got along with that night. If you will, you want to turn over to Acts 27, I'll, I'll show you the conversation for a second. Listen. Acts number 27. Mm -hmm. I was up at, I'll pick up verse number 21. It said, but after a long, as it, I'm saying this, Paul stood forth in the midst of them saying, sirs, you should have hearkened to me. I can, I can have Brother Paul first. First off, I heard Brother Paul just saying, boys, you should have listened to me in the first place tonight. <laughs> Right there. And save my wild trouble tonight. 
I say, sure, listen to the man of God in the first place. And it's the same, it's the same application you're going to find <laughs> with people every time somebody goes, goes up. But I'm thankful not God gave mercy for this text. And I'll show you why. It says, sirs, you should have hearkened to me. But you not, so you're not losing the creed, not gain to it. And I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there now shall be not any, any, man's, any man's life for you but the ship. Right. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, who I said, who is I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, for thou hast brought me before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all, all with them to sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. I said, I said that even if it was given to me before, as it was told on to, on to me. He said, but Paul said, but just tell the boys, listen, I just heard from heaven, Amen. and it's all right now. Yes, I said, Paul said, Paul said, Paul said, listen, just because we locked the ship don't mean we're going to lose any lives tonight. I said, can I tell you? I said, a, bo- a piece of board is going to be nothing, but don't tell 276 men to that. They were in the spot, they were in the storm of their life, at a time of the life. I said, wait, well, tonight, tonight, but God's going to take a piece of board. That's because I put a picture of grace. They're going to get on that board and they're literally going to float over tonight so that Paul Mason and the other men get to the other side and, sk- and schedule tonight. Uh, I'll tell you what, start off with a bad hurricane tonight. Perhaps the devil could have used that hurricane as a form of weapon to try to, to, try to destroy their life. They're going to lose, uh, they're going to lose all the material things, but, that's it, but God's still going to allow them to save their life to make it to the other side. Paul simply saying, why should I worry? Why should I worry? I said, God's got everything under control. Even with a hurricane coming at us. Even we're going to lose everything around us tonight. God's going to see fit. We're going to make it to the other side tonight. Uh, why should we worry? Why should we worry tonight? Uh, I'm telling you this much. Uh, no weapons shall upon the against thee. Shall stand, shall prosper against thee tonight. That's right. Amen. You know, why should, we, why should we worry? We made it to the other side tonight. But you know, number three, you know, why, why should we worry? The devil's already been defeated. Yeah. Right, amen. Amen. I've already read what happen, happens over in the book of Revelation right here tonight. It's not a pretty outcome from, from, his, from his point of view. You see, the Bible tells me, I said, when, I said after those seven years of tribulation over, over the book of Revelation, and after, after the millennial reign for a thousand years, after, after it comes the white, the white throne judgment comes up. Yeah. And that's usually what's going to find. This is where you're going to find everybody tonight that, never been, that was never saved. And those folks, those are, those, are in, those are in hell right now. Those will probably, is it, those will probably end up being, they'll be in hell they'll, during that time for rejecting Jesus Christ. I said, that's, that's, the, that's the sad time. But I'm glad tonight the devil ain't going to be, I said the devil's going to be there. He ain't gonna be with us tonight. That's right. I want you to figure how many times he's tried to ruin life tonight. Why should we worry about what's going on? Because sooner or later, before this life, whether, whether we go by the grave and find out the news or, wh- or whether the Lord takes us home, and, his th- and his cl- he's on the clock, so to speak. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Think about that for a minute. Why should we have to worry? What do you do? Listen, he's not, he's not not in the prince, okay? He's not all powerful. He's got, he may have some power, but he don't have all, have all power tonight. He's not not in the prison, but to me, he's not everywhere at one place. He's got to go to and fro tonight. Listen, he's just doing everything he can because he knows his time's coming up Amen. one day. Whatever we're facing right now is just temporary tonight. Yeah. One day we're not going to be in his presence. One day we're never gonna have. One day we ain't gotta worry about ha- having to face the temptation of sin that, that comes our way. Yeah, you know, one day we don't have to worry. I said tonight uh, about the next lie that had come to low. We don't have to worry tonight. Uh, uh, tonight about next time how many people want to take the hell around us. We don't have to worry about seeing how ta- sin and trying to destroy another Christian's life. We don't have to worry about trying to make havoc of the church a lot, a lot of times. One of these days, he's going down and he's going out for the count this time. One time. But why should, why should we worry? I said, God, he's got, he's got all under control right there. I'm telling you tonight. I'm I'm glad tonight. Why why should we worry? 
I tell you tonight, we're thankful tonight in, tonight in Jesus Christ. We're back. We got this anchor both sure and steadfast tonight. We can, I said, I'm not holding on to him. He's holding on. He's all. He's holding on to me tonight. He's keeping me. He's keeping me together in one piece. If we're saying he's keeping you together in one in one piece tonight. But the question comes. Here's my question tonight. Why are you Why are you worried tonight? I know tonight some of y'all probably the devil's giving us all a hard time tonight. But I'm gonna tell you this much. I said. I said God is our help. He's our refuge in, the very, in our very time of need tonight. So I'm gonna ask this quick question tonight. Who needs to get some help from the Lord and draw closer tonight? I said, well, wait a minute, exactly what the Lord wanted.